called the Gvorma Psuvim Be'esrug. Okay. The others are easy compared to the Esrug. What invalidates an Esrug? Is the most is the most complicated. Ezra is the most complicated. Also, I mean, you can ask it on because the Seder Mishnah, Seder Mishnah, Mishnah speaks of this. So that's Lulav. But all the Albanians are as important. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. You have a brain without a heart. You don't have a person. Okay. <coughs> Esrik Ayovish, a dried out Esrik. Puzzle. Now, how dry does it have to be? It really has to be dry. Shiri Yveshus, how dry does it have to be? Kshena Motsi Shum Lecha. It's so dry that there's no moisture in the Esrik. You know, that's, you know, you leave it in the box for about six months and it becomes like hard as a rock. You know, then that, that's Esrik Ayovish. There's no moisture. The Yivdok Aydei Shiyavabo Machat Ubochut. What do you do? You take a needle with a thread and you put it through the Esrik. So, yeah. Vimyesh Bolecho, Yerobachut, and then you pull the th thread through. So if there's moisture on the thread, you know there's moisture in the Esrik. We'll see. He says, Vesrik Shu Mishana Shavro. He says, an Esrik was from the previous year. Vada Yove Shu, Apostle. Don't even bother. You don't even have to consider it. So the external look of an Esrik when you're old, it's like a... Shriveled up. Yeah. But let's say you preserved it somehow. No. Pretty the priest said, ultimately, it's going to be possible. Because when it, when it thaws, it, everything ruptures and it comes like a sack of fluid afterwards. Okay. Okay, we'll see. Let's see. Hayovish, the muhyovish rak be mitzoso. Only part of the esrig is is dry. I only come see a few days. Mishnah Burasham. Okay, posul. Why, if it's dry, is it not valid? They ain't no hodor. You need pre yet hodor. It's lacking in hodor. The muhkomush, which means it's wilted. She ain't no lach. They ain't no yovish. I feel komush b'kulo kosher. Even it's totally wilted. Because again, what determines whether it's Yovish or not, if there's moisture. Komokum came chain on rowin to komush, but if it's noticeable that it's komush, it's wilted, das mogravom tsoch levodko komush kosi shul norach. Because you never know, even though it seems to be there's moisture, there may not be moisture in it. Yero, yero bechud, hiksha achronim. So the question somebody asked. Dem kein ye nekav mefulosh who posel de rishon shesiv days afilu belo chisoran. If you have a, a hole going from one side through the other, it's not just punctured on one side because you have to pull the needle out with the thread. See if you say put the needle in, pull it out. See if there's moisture on the needle. But here he says no. You pull, put the needle straight through, and you pull it through with the thread, and you see so if that's the case. The needle's going through both sides of the esrik, mm -hmm. and according to one opinion, that a hole which goes through both sides, it's posel. What you do? We're speaking about. Evidently, it's not a very long needle, so you put it in. It's not coming through. And the end of the needle, you have the thread, so you push it in, and when you pull it out with the thread, part of the thread also goes into the goes into the esrug. So part of the thread becomes moist. Then can neck of mfulosh. Okay. Yeshatir shum fulosh lo nikra elok shenike barocha veesrig meaver leaver. Afilosh lo kenegri hazor avok shenike veove shelo. I mean, if you go, you know, you have the length of the esrig and you have the width of the esrig. If you put it through the width, even though the hole goes straight through, it doesn't invalidate it. So only if you go from, from where the pitum is, from the ukets to the pitum, from top to bottom. But if you go through the width, it's not possible. Even though the hole goes straight through. Avuk shenike ba'ovi shelo b'tzad echod da haynu la'orach ha'esro mi'ukzo klapi chodmo. It's just the opposite. The mefulish lo nikra el shenike barocha ha'esro. Maybe only when you go through the width of the esro. 
even though you're not rupturing the location where the seeds are. What does that mean? The length, from the ukits to the tip to the point. We'll see this. Vadi Yovesh, the Ramos says, but if it's an Esser from the previous year, don't bother even doing this test. It's definitely considered dry. Ritzloma di Evsher, she motzwe lecho. Velo yeitzi to elase de bitikos. It's interesting. He says, don't waste your time with the Ramos. Don't, don't waste your time. And the person says, I'll try it. And let's say it does come out moist. Evidently, there's no way if it. If it's last year's esrig and it looks to be pretty much intact, it retains all the characteristics of the esrig. Let's say you wrap it. It's not what you freeze. You wrap it in the way you keep it in a moist location. Right? So evidently, it's just telling you that's just not reality. It's not going to stay. Put it in airtight. You put it in an airtight location. Oposul, I shartim ashevenu b'shem tomim deim. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's not. Th there's a whole discussion. What's choser? What's considered choser? When there's a, it's a tiny hole, it's a pinhole. It's a pinhole. We'll see. Now, this is the halacha of putting a hole through an esrik. Esrik shenikav nekav mefulosh. An esrik where you have a needle, a hole that goes straight through the esrik. Like we have in, in Ervin, movoi mefulosh. Right? You have a movoi. You have a movoi uh, alleyway where you have both sides open, or only one side is open, enclosed on three sides. So it's mefulosh means both sides. So the hole goes from one side of the esrik straight through the other. Culture, as tiny as the hole may be, it's not, you know, you lift it up to the light, you necessarily see it. But you know the needle went straight through the esrik, the hole, possible. She'edim of foolish. What about if the hole is not a hole that goes through both sides of the esrik? Imhu ki'iser, possible. If the hole is as large as an iser, iser is a coin, small coin, meaning the material of the esrog, it's not that you removed any of the uh, any of the flesh of the esrog or the skin. It's like pushed in. It's all it's still attached to the esrog. It's punctured. It's punctured. So even though the opening is less, if it's less than the size of a, let's say the size of a dime, take a dime and you push it into, into the esrog. Okay? Sure, sure. C correct. He says, if, but again, but if as a result making the hole, even if it's, you've actually, you've de detracted from the meat or the flesh or the peel of the esrog as much as an iota, it's possible. Of course, you don't have a full esrog. If it's just pushed in, that you have the full amount, the full esrog is there. So we say if it's less than the size of the small coin, it's still hudder. It still retains its hudder. What? No, a dent is a dent is not a hole, but here's a, there's a hole. It's a hole. It's pushed in. It's more than indentation. It's torn. The f the skin is torn, and it's actually, but it's all just, it's just pushed in on one side. Okay, if it's if it's pushed in the total on all around so that it's detached, right? So the first opinion says if you have hole going through the esrog, it has to be a hole going through both sides. Invalidated. Even if the, the needle, the hole goes through both sides, part of the flesh has to be has to be actually removed. But if again, if it, if the full amount of the esrog is there, it's still valid, even though it's a hole that goes through both sides. So the second opinion is more lenient. Yeah, that, that he asked the question. He asked the question, according to first opinion, that if the hole goes through both sides, that it's possible. So why, he said, so with that test, with the thread, according to the first opinion, it should be possible. Right? That, that, was his, that was the Mogadam's question. 
So the answer, there's a difference if you go through the width of the Esrog or you go through the length of the Esrog. That's what we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that, exactly what difference does it make. Okay? But according to second opinion, as long as you're not actually detracting from the meat or the flesh of the Esrog or the skin, it's valid. Sheinu mefulosh, but if it's not mefulosh, there's much more. If the hole does go, bechasorin kisa. Now we're talking about even if it's part of the, it's missing, uh, how much of, it, of the esrog has to be missing? The size of, of the coin. So this is already a tremendous leniency. You know, today, an esrog which doesn't have a spot on it sells for a very large amount of money. Howard, you know that. Okay. So what do they do? So, so very often. It's not, it, it, there's, you know, the, um, there's like, there's, there's um, sand or soil. It gets, the esrog becomes soil when it's on the tree. So the, the, un, the, soil, the soil becomes embedded in the, in the creases, in the creases in the esrog. So what do they do? So normally what they t do is usually they take wax, beeswax, and they press it to the esrog. So therefore, and then they pull it up away. So therefore, any uncleanliness in the, in the crevices, in the creases, attaches to the beeswax, and it's, it's not a problem. But sometimes you have situations where it's more than just soil. It's soiled because the soil or some other uncleanliness, it has something. So they take a pin, and they try to peel it away. Because if, if it, sometimes you have something like attaching, uh, it, it's attached to the skin. It's like sometimes you have something, uh, an adhesion on the skin. So you, you peel away the adhesion, the skin, there's skin under the adhesion. So the, what do they do? So they try to peel it away. So by peeling it away, they hope they're not going to puncture the skin. But very often, they do puncture it. You know, trying to, because the esteric go, could go from uh, a $75 esteric to a $200 esteric by not having a spot on it. So they're willing to take the chance. So very often, Afterwards, if you, if you look at it closely, there's, there's a hole there. So if there's a hole, it becomes a problem because if the hole is there and because they pick it, when you pick it, that means you're actually removing something from the esrog. And according to one opinion, if it's choser, even according to the first opinion, even it's mashu, even if it's choser, even if it's a, 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 a minuscule amount that the esrog has been removed, the esrog is invalidated. According to the second opinion, it's much more lenient. It has to be mis uh, uh, has to be choser iser. The size of this the small coin has that amount has to be removed from the esrog to be puzzled. This is why the examiner should uh, obey the final judgment. Even with a you can't see it because sometimes if it's pushed in, if it's pushed in, it's not a problem. See, but when they remove the, 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 uh, the whatever it is, they call it a fleck. It's something like, a, like a something on top of it. They pick it. When you pick something off, you actually, you're, you're removing it. So they mean you're actually removing part of the esrog. So the esrog becomes what we call choser. It's not, it's not a fully intact esrog. Part of the esrog is missing. Okay? Sometimes you can't tell. It's very difficult to tell. So, you mach me. You don't buy it. Okay? What? Definitely. No, but even for the lesser price, you're not willing. It's a question. Ba'aloha. We'll see there's a difference between the first day and the latter, latter days. First day is the right, so you definitely mach me. Latter days, which only draw on, we have two opinions here. You know, you can rely on the Molin's opinion. We'll see. No, no, no. The the not too much dryness. Now it's not a question of dryness. Now we're yes, talking I about. Yeah. Feel. Again, you know, at one time people didn't have much choice, so they had to make do with something which uh, looks semi-dry. So, what is dry? It has to be dry to be possible. So they they had to do this test. Or whoever heard of doing such a test? You know, when you have one estimate for a whole community, and this is the only thing you come up with, so you do your best. You can't do better than that. Hago dramoses v'nogu lahachir hanukovim shenas biilon al yidei kotsim. Again, this is another discussion. You know, you come to the, by the estrogen, they say, well, it happened on the tree. Very often, the, the estrogen hangs on the, you know, the estrogen is on the tree for a long time. It stays more, th it stays more than a year. More than a year, it goes, stays, stays almost two years. So when the wind blows, and let's say it hits against a branch, or let's say there's a thorn, 
it can become punctured on the tree. So one, one, as long as it's growing, if the puncture happens when it's growing, that's not called chaser. Chaser is only considered a deficient, not a whole esrog, only after it's been removed from the tree, it's been picked, then part of the esrog was removed from the esrog. But if the puncture took place while it was on the tree, while it was growing, we don't reckon with that, that puncture. Okay? Even though the puncture caused that part of the esrog should actually be, it w- the esrog became uh, compromised. It was, it was the part of its... Its, its, its wholesomeness was detracted. Why should so I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. This comes up, you know, Shmur Matzo. So, you buy Shmur Matzo. So, very often, the Shmur Matzo, you have to have a Sholem. You have to have a whole Shmur Matzo. If you go through them very often, some of them are actually broken, but the edges are burnt. So, it's not a whole Matzo. But it happened while it was baking. So when they took it out of the oven, meaning it came out whole, but whole not as a whole matzah, but it was baked that way. Is that called a sholem? It's not a sholem. It's a sholem. Because sh- not a sholem, not who means it actually was diminished after it was baked. But in the, if in the baking process, it was actually broken as it was being baked, part of it fell, fell away, and the edges burnt, and you see that w- it was baked that way, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Even if it's much smaller than the regular one. No, of course. You have, we're talking about Sholem. Yeah, we, we, the two things. There's eating, um, there's a volume which you have to eat, and there's what, you, what, what you're saying, the, uh, you're saying the mozi or, or, or alechidus matzah. It's two separate things. So it's not that it's not considered a kisar, but that there's a question. That's, it's called a Sholem. It's considered a Sholem. No, there's a Sholem. It's a sh- this is considered, not considered choser. Even though factually part of the esrog is missing, mm-hmm. but since it was actually removed while it was growing, that's considered a whole esrog. Hell esrog means it was picked in this manner. It was, it was a whole esrog when you picked it off the tree. I'll tell you the reason. It's interesting, very interesting. People who had this course to go see Remichel Yudha Lefkowitz at Tzadik Lebrocha, in his front, right in front of his house, he had an esrog bush, esrog tree. That esrog, you know, in Eretz Israel, till today, they call it, it is Lefkowitz Esrogin. Why are they called Lefkowitz Esrogin? Very interesting. Rev. Rechel Yudha Lefkowitz, Eitz Sarah Lebrach, was a student, was a Talmud of the Chazonish. The Chazonish, he had, he spent months locating that special esrog in terms of its pedigree, that it wasn't crossbred, many, many things. And the Chazonish gave his, one of his esrogim to Remichel Yudah Lefkowitz 70 years ago, 65 years ago. He planted, he planted it. So all the esrogim that grew on that bush had that pedigree. There was no question. They were definitely 100% considered pedigree of an esrog. A kosher esrog. People used to come to him and ask him, whatever, it's 20, 30 that we grow on the bush every year, this small esrog tree. It was, it was front, as you came into his house, you saw it, it was growing there. And the people paying for it, of course, they didn't pay for it. They took it. Could we take it? So, of course, take it. You know, he had enough for himself and his family. An, the, the, the lifespan of an esrog tree is maximum five years. Seven years. They don't, yeah, they have to reap. In the first three years, four, three years, you're not permitted to benefit. It's Orla. So, it's, it's, part, of, it's part, of, part of the cost factor. The bush existed, grew. This tree grew, stayed in... in, in Viable for over 60 years. 60 years it produced esrogin. Right after he passed away, within a month, the, bush, the tree died. That was this, with, the, with, this, with this esrog tree. Was that in Yerushalayim? B'nai Brak. Had nothing to do with uh, engine, any type of engineering. They did so many, what they call Lefkowitz Esrog, it's not a came off that tree. Any Esrog, they, sure, they planted from that, those original Esrog, they planted. Mm-hmm. Like Rabbi Michal Yudha used to say, he used to say always, people used to come to him that he should be in the spawn for them. They'd have children, people were not well, and they got well, and they had children. And then afterwards, but he kept, he was mis- kept pl- praying for them. So he says, he doesn't understand. The people come to him, they share their tzaras. He's paying, he prays. 
their issues resolved, but he keeps praying because they never come to, to inform him that they have the child or the person recovered. <laughs> you know, that's the way it is. It's the same thing, you know, uh, could I have an Ezra? Of course you could have an Ezra. You pay for it, you say thank you. Maybe the person says thank you. The way it is.